My name's John Ladd. I'm a rancher on the southern border of Arizona, and my family homesteaded this property in 1896, and we've been here ever since. John Ladd lives in Arizona's Cochise County, about 100 miles from Tucson and 220 miles from Phoenix. His ranch sprawls over 14,000 acres between the Mexican border and State Highway 92. Interstate 10 is about an hour away. The ranch is a major corridor for the smuggling of drugs and human beings into the United States. Ladd raises beef cattle, though he jokes that his principal job is to grow enough grass to feed the cattle. That is a constant challenge in this land of little rain. Ladd lives close to two small towns called Naco. At the ranch's eastern edge is Naco, Arizona, where the largest employer is the Border Patrol. The town's much bigger twin hugs the border from the Mexican state of Sonora. There it caters to Americans looking for low-cost dental care and pharmaceuticals. It is also a jumping-off point for drug smugglers and for illegal immigration. The Border Patrol has the job of securing the international boundary between ports of entry. At the Ladd Ranch, the border is marked by a fence. Some of it is 13 feet tall, much of it is 10 feet. It is not much of an obstacle especially when the Border Patrol is not around, which, Ladd says, is frequently the case. Still, the Border Patrol makes frequent arrests on the ranch. The Horse Patrol has been particularly effective, but most of those who are arrested are released into Mexico where they regroup and try again. And so the illegal border crossers keep coming confident of eventual success. These videos taken at Ladd's house show groups who have just jumped the border fence and are heading to the highway to meet vehicles that will take them northward. In April of this year, Ladd talked about the view from his kitchen window. They jump the wall at the border, walk down the mesquite thicket, come across in this clearing that you can see out behind my house. Most of those who cross the ranch are young men and women who want to join friends or relatives in cities and towns across the United States. Some of them are carrying drugs. The influx is so intense and relentless that the people who live here often call it an invasion. That is why the man who placed the hidden cameras that took these videos calls his website borderinvasionpics.com. Smuggling has a long history in this area, but the flow of human beings didn't become intense until 1994 after the Border Patrol built up its forces in El Paso and San Diego, along the centers of illegal immigration. Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano, former governor of Arizona, noted how that effort has affected her state. We have uh, done a pretty good job of closing off uh, San Diego, Tijuana area and uh, the El Paso uh, area. Uh, but that has caused a lot of the drug trafficking organizations and human trafficking organizations to focus their roots uh, into Arizona along uh, that corridor. And our goal now is to shut that corridor down. No one seems to know exactly how to define border security. But one measure is the number of arrests recorded in the Border Patrol's Tucson sector, which accounts for 262 miles of the nearly 2,000-mile U.S.-Mexico border. The Naco Border Patrol station is one of eight stations in the Tucson sector. In 1992, the Tucson sector arrested 71,000 illegal immigrants. Then the steady climb began. In 1994, the sector recorded 139,000 arrests. Ten years later, the number reached 492,000. In the past few years, arrests have fallen off sharply. Some experts say the drop is due mostly to the depressed U.S. job market. The Border Patrol claims the drop is evidence of its success. In any case, the 241,000 arrests in the Tucson sector in 2009 averaged out to 660 every day of the year. No one knows how many avoided arrest. The Border Patrol has also seen dramatic growth. The 3,700 agents now stationed in the Tucson sector are more than the Border Patrol had nationwide in 1986. From about 5,000 agents in 1994, the patrol doubled by 2002. Since then, it has doubled again, now exceeding 20,000 agents. That increase, along with new technology and infrastructure, led Secretary Napolitano to make this claim. The plain fact of the matter is, is that uh, uh, the border is as secure now uh, as it's ever been. Such claims are met with ridicule in Cochise County. Southeastern Arizona Congresswoman, Democrat Gabrielle Giffords, read letters from her constituents on the floor of the House of Representatives. The U.S.-Mexico border is out of control and has been for some very long time. We laugh out loud when we hear the politicians claim that the border is more secure 
This uninformed view is a political fairy tale. The ceaseless influx poses dangers not only to local residents, but also to President Obama's calls for reforms to legalize the status of nearly all illegal immigrants. Many members of Congress say such legislation can pass only if the border is secure against large-scale illegal immigration. Otherwise, they say, it would send a signal that those who don't play by the rules at the border are allowed to win the game. The shooting murder of Cochise County rancher Rob Krentz in the spring of 2010 by a suspected smuggler brought nationwide attention to the frustrations there. President Obama responded by sending the National Guard to the border. The Border Patrol responded by bringing to the border some of the agents who had been working farther north as part of a strategy called Defense in Depth. That strategy makes the Tucson sector responsible not just for its 262 linear miles of border, but for 90,000 square miles. One vocal critic of the strategy is Gary Thrasher, a veterinarian who lives about 10 miles from John Ladd's house. Thrasher said it would be better to concentrate agents close to the border where they could prevent illegal border crossings. He claims the Border Patrol designs its strategy in order to impress Congress, not control the border. The Border Patrol has to have apprehensions and has to have arrests and has to have a confiscations of drugs in order to get any funding, to get any attention. If they stood on the fence and prevented it from coming, they would have nothing to report. Some border residents disagree with Thrasher. They warn that if the Border Patrol overemphasizes forward deployment, it will make life easy for smugglers who get past the first line of defense. But now that line is constantly breached, for example, by smugglers who guide illegal immigrants through the Huachuca Mountains, seen here in the background west of the Ladd Ranch. Here is a view from the Huachucas looking across the ranch and into Mexico. I talked with an illegal immigrant from the state of Chiapas who hiked across the mountains last November with 10 others. He paid $2,800 to be smuggled to Maryland, where he is now working in two fast food restaurants. They crossed the border early in the morning. They walked all day and most of the night through the Huachucas. They were picked up in a side canyon the next day. Then they dealt with a key component of defense in depth, the checkpoint on the highway between the city of Sierra Vista and Interstate 10. The smugglers drove the group about 20 minutes to a drop-off point at a ranch east of the checkpoint. Once again, they walked all day and most of the night, on their way northward to a rendezvous with two vehicles near Interstate 10. The Border Patrol has called the checkpoints a key part of its strategy to secure the border. In 2007, for example, Border Patrol Chief David Aguilar told Congress that checkpoints are critical because they frustrate smugglers' efforts to get beyond the border. Yet as the story of the man from Chiapas demonstrates, the flanks of the checkpoints are often poorly patrolled, allowing illegal immigrants to simply walk around them, creating new trails as they go and often destroying fences. The frustration of the Arizonans whose land is used to defeat the checkpoints is echoed by Border Patrol agents who say they simply don't have enough manpower to do the job right. During a stop along the highway just north of the checkpoint, Brandon Judd, president of the union in the Tucson sector, talked about the problem. We just don't have the manpower to work the areas to the east and west of the checkpoint. If there's several groups out there, which there are several groups as we speak, um, if there's several groups out there, the chances of a couple of agents catching those groups are, are, are very, very slim. Judd said the failure on the flanks of the checkpoints mirrors the Border Patrol's inability to muster enough agents to control the trails through the Huachucas. To effectively cover those mountains um, at any given period of time, you would, need, you would need upwards of 50 agents to cover those mountains um, to make it halfway effective. Uh, and four, is what, which is what is normally assigned there, just doesn't do it. Such gaping holes in the borderlands compound frustration in Arizona, where many people scoff at assurances that the border is steadily being secured. They have heard it many times before, and many share John Ladd's belief that Border Patrol management is more interested in impressing Congress than in stopping illegal immigration. In general, the Border Patrol manages the border for politicians. They don't try and manage it to stop the flow. So anyway, the bottom line is, is it's all about politics. It's not about securing the border.